Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today I'm going to show you how to take a picture, a portrait, of a person outside on a bright sunny day with a Fuji X100V using just the little built-in flash. Be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photo Bomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found, and I guarantee you will enjoy it. Also, join my group on Facebook, Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. It's a fantastic community and a great place for you to get answers to your questions. And of course, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button because that helps to keep this channel alive. All right, let's start from the very beginning and work our way forward to the point where we're taking great pictures with the little flash in the X100V outside on a bright day. Now, if you want to skip all this, if you don't want to learn about why we do it this way and understand how this works, that's totally, totally fine. Just skip ahead in the video to the conclusion. And in the conclusion, I will tell you, here's how I set up my camera, go and have fun. But if you want to understand why we set the camera up this way, because let me tell you, there's going to be times when it's not going to work quite the way you want it to. And if you don't understand, you're not going to be able to fix it, right? If you don't, if you want to understand that, then stick with me because this is going to be very interesting. This may be very eye-opening for you. All right, so let's start off with we're outside on a bright sunny day. It's about noon here in Florida. You, you can't be any more hot and bright than it is right now outside my house. So first thing I did was I set the camera up and I put everything on auto. So let's just let the camera take it, let the camera decide everything it's going to do and take a picture, and this is what I get. And this is a fine picture, right? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with this picture. Uh, my subject is lit, you know, I'm balanced out, everything's good, this is fine. And you can run on all day long with your camera on auto and shoot like this. But we don't want to shoot on auto because we're photographers. We want to control things. We want to make changes. We want to have some direction and some purpose in what we do. So I have three things that I want to do whenever I'm doing a portrait. There's three things that I'm looking for. One, I want the background to be really shallow. I want the depth of field to be really shallow, which means I want the background to be really blurry because that makes my subject pop off of the field and stand out. Number two, is I want the background to be a little bit darker than my subject for the very same reason. It makes my subject pop out. If the background is dark and blurry, well, now you the subject just pops right off the page. And number three, I want my subjects to be well lit. I want their face to be well lit for the portrait. So three things that I'm trying to get to. Now, this picture has got one of the three. My face is well lit, but the background is too bright and it's too blurry. So let's take control of the camera and force it to do what we want it to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make the background blurry, and that means we're going to set the camera to f2, aperture f2. Listen, if you have a Fuji X100V, one of the great things about this camera is it's got this fantastic built-in lens that will shoot at f2. So me, I'm shooting at f2 almost all the time. I mean, let's take advantage of this great f2 aperture. So I set the camera at f2, I let everything else be auto, and I take another shot. And this is what the camera gives me. So what happened here? Well, f2 is wide open. Right before, I think we were at what? We were at 5.6 before. Now we're at f2, so it's wide open. It's letting tons of light into the camera, and the camera's doing everything it can to compensate for that. But it simply can't compensate for everything. So if you look down at the settings, bottom left down here, you'll see that the shutter speed is at two thousandths of a second, which is the very fast. It's the fastest shutter speed the camera can set when you're at f2, and it's got the ISO at 200. Now it could have gone down to 160. Uh, but it decided to go at 200. It decided that was good enough. So, so it's going to stay at 200. Well, my background is blurry, but it's way too bright. That's not good. So let's go to the next step and let's force the camera to do more of what we want. The problem is we have no place to go. If we're going to stay at f2, we can't raise the shutter speed anymore, and we really can't lower the ISO anymore. I mean, we could lower it to 160, but that's not going to make a difference. That's a third of a stop. That's not going to make a difference. So that's when we go to this great feature that the camera has, and that's the built-in neutral density filter. So we go to the neutral density filter, and we turn it on. This is a four-stop neutral density filter. So this is going to take, let's see, 100 becomes 50, becomes 25, becomes 12, becomes 6. So now it's going to take it down to 6% of the light that was there before. And then it's going to adjust its other settings to make the picture look good. So we engage the neutral density filter and we take another picture. Bam. And now this is what we get. And now we're getting closer. 
All right, the background's getting darker, still blurry because we're at F2, and the camera is lighting my face. However, I would like the background to be just a little bit darker. So let's go into the camera and set the exposure compensation to minus one. We're going to tell the camera, let's crank everything down one more stop, get that background one stop darker, and see what we get. And this is what we get. So now we're getting blurry background, dark background, the separation that we want. The third thing we want is the face needs to be well lit, and it's not quite well lit. It's just a little bit dark. Why is that? And this is where it's going to get tricky, so buckle up. <laughs> this is where you're going to learn something that's going to blow your mind, and if you can wrap your head around it, it's going to change the whole game for you. The thing you have to understand about photography and the thing you have to understand about flash photography is that everything you set on your camera affects all the light that comes into your camera, except for shutter speed. Shutter speed does not affect flash. I'll say it again. Shutter speed does not affect flash for the most part. So if you take your aperture and you change it so that only half as much light is coming into the camera, it affects every light source that comes into the camera. It affects the flashlight that's coming into the camera. It affects the ambient light that's coming into the camera. But if you change your aperture and you've got, I'm sorry, but if you change your shutter speed, right, it affects the ambient light that's coming into your camera, but it does not affect the flashlight that's coming into your camera. Why is that? If you change the aperture, you change the size of the hole in the opening in your camera. Every light coming into the camera is affected by the fact that the hole just got smaller. But if you change the shutter speed, how long the hole is open, that will affect light that is streaming in constantly. Because if the hole's open half as long, only half as much of that light gets in. But it will not affect light that comes in in a burst, which is what happens with your flash. Your flash fires at the little, literally at the speed of light, much faster than any shutter speed. So the flash is going to get all the light in the camera. If you're at, if you're at one hundredth of a second or if you're at one thousandth of a second, all that flashlight is still going to get into the camera because it travels much faster than that shutter speed does. Make sense? So changing your shutter speed can affect all your ambient light, but not affect your flash so much. And why is this important? Because we have a very small flash on the X100V. It doesn't have much power. So every time we change our aperture, or we change our ISO, or we put a neutral density filter in play, we are cutting down the power of that flash. It's still going to fire at full power, but it's not going to have full effect. The neutral density filter alone takes your flash and basically turns it into, an, into a flash that only has 6% of its power. And it's a small flash to begin with. Right? It goes from 100%, one, one stop is 50, the next stop is 25, the next stop is 12, the next stop is 6. So now it's 6% power. That flash is too small to fire at 6% and give you the light that you need. You need more power from the flash. So we can fix that. Look at our settings. It decided on a shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second and an ISO of 320. If we raise the shutter speed to 2,000th of a second, we will cut down the light coming into the camera. And if we raise the ISO as well, we will bring that light back. The difference is, when we cut down the light coming into the camera with the shutter speed, it won't affect the flash. When we raise the ISO to bring the light back, it will affect the flash. We will effectively double the amount of power that the flash has. So we go into the camera and we have our F2 set for our aperture and now we force our shutter speed at two thousandths of a second and see what happens. And this is what we get. The camera did exactly what I thought it would do. I forced my shutter speed to two thousandths of a second and the camera changed the ISO to 640. So in the camera, in the shot before, we were at 320 and 1000. And in the next shot, we're at 640 and 2000. That's the same exposure. The ISO let in twice as much light and the shutter speed took away half the light. We end up with the same number at the end. But yet my face has more light on it in this picture than in this picture. And that's because I suspect that the flash is firing at full power in this picture, but it is being so, so reduced by the four-stop neutral density filter and the ISO of 320 that it just can't get enough light on my face. But in this one, we bring back some more of that flash power by raising the ISO to 640. And as a result, we get more light on my face. And this is what I was looking for all along. My face is lit well, my background is dark, and it's as blurry as I can make it. That is a good portrait 
outside in bright light with the flash on the Fuji X100V. All right, if you skipped all the learning and you jumped right to the end so you could find out just, hey, how do you set up your camera to take these pictures, Blu-ray? Here's how I set up my camera. When I go out on a really bright day and I want to take some portraits of people, I know I'm going to take portraits of people, here's what I do. I set my aperture to 2.0 because I want a blurry background. I set my shutter speed to 1 2,000th of a second because that's the fastest shutter speed that you can set at f2.0 on the Fuji X100V. And then I dial in my ISO until the background it looks the way I want it to look in the photograph. If I can't get the background to look the way I want it to look, and by that I mean the background is too bright and I can't get it darker, I can't get it as dark as I want it to get, even though I've lowered the ISO as low as it will go, then I engage the built-in neutral density filter and I again adjust my ISO until the background looks the way I want it to look, and then I take my picture. That is how I set up and shoot outdoor portraits with the flash built into the Fuji X 100V. I strongly recommend you go back and watch why. <laughs> because there will be times it won't work. And that's the great thing about being a photographer. When those times happen, if you understand everything that goes on with your camera, if you understand how it works, you will be able to figure out how to get around that. Now, sometimes you can't get around with it. Sometimes it's going to be just so bright that even with the neutral density filter, you're not going to get enough flash power on your subject and you're just not going to be able to get the exact image that you want. And when that happens, well, then you've got to just, you know, close your aperture down some more. Uh, you've got to, you know, get closer to your subject. You've got, to, you've got to do something because sometimes you just can't get what you want because you've got this small flash on the Fuji x 100 v There's only so much you can do. But if you want to squeeze the maximum power out of your small flash on your Fuji in a bright situation, start with a shutter speed of one two thousandths of a second. That's your starting point because that will get the maximum power out of your flash while knocking down your ambient light as much as you can with the shutter speed. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.